Hello from Atlantic Canada, everyone. And today in the garage, I have a French door bottom freezer fridge. It's working perfectly, as you can see. Yesterday, it was a 300 pound paperweight. I fixed it myself for 30 bucks, saved myself five, six hundred dollars with parts and installation. Uh, easy to do with some basic tools. I'm going to show you how to do it and save you a lot of money. So let's get started. So I purchased this fridge from Sears about nine years ago, and that's about the life expectancy of a, a major appliance today. This particular brand is a Kenmore, but Sears, as you know, they don't make their own fridges. So this, this one is a Maytag. I've also seen it as a Frigidaire, and they're all the same internally with the same replacement parts. Uh, you might find some cosmetic differences, different handles, or a different bezel around the uh, front electronics. But they all have the same problem as well. And eight or nine years into usage, the circuit board dies in the back. And uh, that's an expensive repair. And if you get a new circuit board and you can install it yourself, it's still gonna cost you 400, maybe $500, and you have to reprogram the fridge using the panel. So that's a bit of a pain. So I'll show you how I fix the fridge by changing some capacitors on the main circuit board. So. Let's go around back and I'll show you the circuit board. So the sheet metal panel has four screws. That's what hides the uh, circuit board. The circuit board itself is held in with two clips up top and on the bottom. You can just pry that out with a common screwdriver. Uh, make sure your fridge is unplugged, obviously. Uh, the circuit board has four connections and they're different sizes so uh, you don't have to worry about plugging them in the wrong spot when you put everything back together. Now the main culprit from what I've seen online are these capacitors. The three main ones that go are normally these. So I changed those out and nothing happened. So in the kit that I bought, there was five other capacitors, four the same, so I changed those next. One, two, three, and four. And still the fridge was dead. So I was about to give up all hope until I changed the last capacitor, which is down here. And when I changed that, the fridge came back to life. So that was great. So let's go inside and I'll show you how I changed the capacitors. Okay, this is the main circuit board from the back of my uh, Kenmore fridge. It's labeled Maytag W1031024010. So I've also seen this board online uh, labeled as a Whirlpool with a different number. So there's various uh, numbers and names on the same board. And they range in price between uh, 350 and 450. So if you're going to get somebody to install a new board, uh, they're going to have their markup on the price of the board plus the installation. So it could be six or seven hundred dollar uh, job. So we're going to try and fix this ourselves with uh, some capacitors that I bought online. So let's get started. So these are the replacement capacitors that I purchased online on eBay. Uh, they're the same capacitance and voltage, but the uh, physical size is a little smaller. They're a higher quality capacitor uh, made in Japan. And apparently the culprit on this board is these three capacitors here. So we'll start by changing those. And if that doesn't work, I have five smaller ones that came in that same kit and we'll replace those next. And hopefully that'll fix our problem. So you don't need to be a uh, electronics repair guy to do basic work like this. Uh, we're going to attempt to release the solder on the back of the board and install some new capacitors and, and we need some basic tools to do that. We have a small soldering iron, a soldering paste brush, some solder, uh, here's the paste. This odd looking device is a solder sucker I purchased online and it's spring loaded and the way it's supposed to work, I've never used one but we'll, we'll try it together. Uh, you compress the spring and as you heat up the hot solder on the back of your board, you compress this button and the spring unlatches and it causes a vacuum inside 
and that supposedly sucks up the solder. So we'll give that a shot. If that doesn't work, the solder sucker kit also came with this. It's a braided copper strand wire. And what you do with this is you add a little bit of flux to it. And then as you heat the solder on your board, you dip this in it and this acts like a wick and it sucks the old, old solder back up and on this. So we'll give that a shot. Okay, before we get started on the uh, desoldering, I have to point out something on these capacitors. Uh, they have a positive and a negative side, which you have to take note of. The positive has the longer arm on it. The negative, you can see, has a marking that looks like a little rectangle or a, like a double A battery shape that's on that. And that corresponds with the ones that were taking off the board. And they have the same marking on the back here. So we want to put these new capacitors in the right spots with the right polarities. So I'm going to mark with a black marker down here just so I don't forget that all the negatives are going to point inward on the board. So I'll do that now. did actually remove some solder. Okay, for this application, because the, uh, the joints are so small, the ribbon is actually working better than the solder sucker. That, that's probably for bigger circuits. Okay, so that's the last one out. It was a little more of a pain than I expected. I had to get a bigger soldering gun because the small one I had uh, wasn't getting hot enough. Uh, I propped it up and attached a small set of vice grips to the bottom of the capacitor just to give it some downward pressure. Uh, with the bigger soldering gun, it heated up quite nicely and as the flux liquefied, I just pulled down with the vice grips and they pulled right out. So those three are out and now we can install our new ones. So I found a great use for the solder sucker. Uh, I went back to the small soldering iron, propped the board up and put the solder sucker on the opposite side of the hole. And as you heat up the solder on this side, it sucks it out right through the hole with this, so that worked perfect. Okay, now we can install the new capacitors. So we'll add some flux to our new capacitors. That will ensure that the uh, solder will stick to them. And some flux to the holes in our board. And now we'll put our capacitors in, making sure the positive and neutral are on the right side. Once they're soldered in place, we can cut the uh, cut the ends off those.
Okay, they're soldered in, so we let that cool down, and we'll cut these ends off, these tabs off, and then we'll plug it in and dry it. Okay, so now that our new capacitors are uh, on our board, we can reinstall it. Hook up our four connectors. Uh, there's a plastic cover that goes over top first. And then our sheet metal cover. So now we can plug our fridge in and see if it works. You can hear the ice flapper close and there we go. Back in business. So that concludes my fridge repair video. You can probably tell from that footage that I'm not going to win any awards for soldering or desoldering. Uh, but I did manage to fix the fridge myself for uh, under 50 bucks, so that's, that's good. Stay tuned at the end of this video, I'll add some bonus footage showing what the fridge was doing before I fixed it. Uh, you'll see the uh, board clicking on and off and the, uh, compress the compressor trying to start, but it would only go for a couple of seconds. Uh, also, I'll add a link to where I got the parts on eBay from a guy out west in British Columbia. Uh, he was a really good guy, his name is Robert, and uh, he took the time on Saturday to help me with a bunch of stupid questions I had on voltage and capacitance. So uh, I highly recommend him, and I'll uh, put that link at the end of the video. So that's it from Atlantic Canada. Have a great day, everybody. That's cold.